Ladies and gentlemen, I've just purchased a new car. It is this, a 2012 Mercedes E63 AMG wagon. Yes, it's a station wagon, like the one your mom used to haul you to school when you were a kid. Except this one has 520 horsepower. And yes, before you ask, it also has a bumper-to-bumper -bumper unlimited mileage warranty. Now, before I get into the specifics of this car, I want to mention something. Every year, I pull you, my readers and viewers, to help me choose a new car that will be the Doug car that I'll write about and shoot videos with that year. This isn't that. This is a new personal car for me, a daily driver. It replaces my CarMax Range Rover, which I've had for five years and which will now be driven by my wife. So don't get mad that I didn't pull you. There will be a new Doug car competition soon. This one is for me. So on to the specifics. Like I said, this is a 2012 Mercedes E63 AMG wagon, which means that under here is a 520 horsepower twin turbo V8. Unfortunately, while I've loved my CarMax warranty experience, this one didn't come from CarMax. More on that later. I bought this one certified pre-owned from a Mercedes-Benz dealer. Mercedes, I suspect, has never heard of me. Based on my previous experience with my warranty claims, my Range Rover, I also suspect that might change soon. Now, the Mercedes-Benz certified pre-owned warranty is notoriously bad. It's just one year of extra warranty coverage on top of the original factory warranty, while most competitors offer many more years than that. So I paid extra to extend my warranty to up to three years of unlimited mileage, bumper-to-bumper -bumper certified pre-owned coverage from the day that I bought the car, which is the last day in July. I will now pause so that the Mercedes-Benz warranty department can mark July 31, 2020 on their calendars as a day of corporate celebration. As usual, I found this car on AutoTrader, which is where I find all of my cars, yes, even before I started working for them, and I paid $44,000 for it, plus about $4,000 extra to extend the warranty for three years of coverage. But there's one thing I haven't yet mentioned about my new AMG wagon, and that is, it's right here in Minneapolis, and I live 1,200 miles that way in Philadelphia. You want to know why I went all this way to get this car? It's because this one is incredibly rare. This was the only certified pre-owned E63 AMG wagon from this body style for sale in the entire United States. Click the link below to go to autotrader.com slash oversteer for more of my AMG wagon thoughts and for a list of other incredibly rare cars currently listed for sale on Autotrader with a certified pre-owned warranty. So what do you do with a newly purchased car with an unlimited mileage bumper to bumper warranty? Well, you drive it 1,200 miles home, of course. So today I'm gonna to show you what it's like to drive home on a 520 horsepower wagon halfway across the country just two days after I bought it. I'm also going to explain the particulars of why I chose this exact car, and I'm gonna give you a little tour of my station wagon, although I'm gonna save the quirks and features for a future video. For now, it's time to get on the road. All right, so I'm going to start with my decision-making process that came to the AMG wagon. Now, I don't often do these, oh, here's what I bought, guys, videos. So if you're not interested, I understand. You can watch the next one. But I know some people will want to know what drives a person to buy a crazy car like this. So what I really wanted for a new car, I loved my Range Rover, but I wanted uh, something with more performance. But I also wanted uh, an SUV, again. I wanted a 360-degree camera, like some of these new cars have, like a top-down camera because they're so cool. And I wanted uh, all wheel drive. And so the AMG wagon is not an SUV, not all wheel drive, and it doesn't have a 360 camera. So I really did well with this purchase, I think. Truthfully, the thing I wanted the most was more performance. I drive all these high performance cars, then I get back in my Range Rover, and it's so lumbering and slow and awful. So the first car I considered was the BMW X5M. I really wanted an X5M, but I couldn't find one in historical blue, which is the color I really wanted. It just looks great. I think it doesn't look so good in every other color. Plus the X5M really didn't have the features I wanted. It's hard to find one in the year I wanted with adaptive cruise control and with the 360 camera and I couldn't afford a brand new one. The car I wanted most was a Mercedes GL63 AMG which I think is almost more insane and bizarre than the AMG wagon. It's a seven-seater giant SUV with this engine. It's ridiculous uh, and it had all the features I wanted. It was an SUV. It had all-wheel drive. It was the perfect car except uh, at the end of the day, it was just too expensive. The cheapest GL63s are $67,000, $70,000. Not only could I not afford that, but I also couldn't afford the ensuing depreciation that would come. I also considered a used Porsche Cayenne Turbo. Unfortunately, it's really hard to find one of those with adaptive cruise control, which is another feature I wanted. And they didn't get that 360 camera until very recently. The other thing is, I don't like how the Cayenne Turbo looks. I like my SUVs boxy, and the Cayenne Turbo is like flowing lines and sweeping curves, and it just wasn't my thing. A car has a lot of power, it's fun to drive, but it just wasn't for me and the same went for the Macan. 
I also considered the Mercedes ML63 AMG, which is a little bit smaller than the GL and a little bit cheaper and has this engine and it's an SUV, but I just, the ML to me is is sort of more of a minivan. It's, it's, it's not as much of an exciting SUV as the X5M or the Cayenne. As for why I chose Mercedes-Benz certified pre-owned over CarMax, it's an excellent question. When I bought my Range Rover warranty at CarMax five years ago, it was 3,800 bucks and it was six years. Today, CarMax has shortened their warranty by a year, so now it's only five years, which is disappointing, but I could have lived with that. The big problem is the cost. I called on a GL63 at CarMax X5M Cayenne Turbo. They wanted six, seven, eight thousand dollars for those warranties, and that was with a 150 deductible. My Range Rover deductible was only fifty dollars, so seven thousand dollars for warranty. Plus, you pay tax on the seven thousand dollars. Plus, the deductible is higher. Plus, it's one year shorter than it was when I had my Range Rover warranty. In the end, it was still really appealing, and on some of those cars, I still think I probably would have come out ahead. But it was a hard pill to swallow, especially because I couldn't really guarantee that I was going to have the car for five years. Years. And I think you really have to have it for that full period of time in order to justify the warranty because otherwise you might not make the money back on it. Still, I would have bought this car from CarMax, but these things are just so rare, they're impossible to find. Mercedes-Benz says they make maybe 200 of these a year for the entire country. I haven't seen one pop up on CarMax in over a year. So with all that, you're probably wondering, well, how did you arrive on the AMG wagon? Well, I was looking at my choices and I realized I was going to have to compromise on something, whether it was the performance or the price or the fact that it was an SUV or the technology and at the same time I realized that what I really wanted was something that was a little bit more special and my Range Rover is just not all that special and I wanted something that was more unique more special something that car enthusiasts would appreciate and so I started looking at AMG wagons and I found this one now if you know a lot about the E63 AMG you'll know that they facelifted this car two years later they added all-wheel drive and all the technology that I was looking for so you might be wondering why I didn't go for that one well the biggest reason was price I was able to find 2012 and 13 models in the 40 50,000 dollar range but the facelifted 14 was over $80,000 for a CPO one, and it just didn't make any sense to pay that much more for just a little bit more technology and all-wheel drive. The other problem is that I happen to think that the facelifted E63 AMG with its new front end, it's a bit much. In fact, I happen to think it kind of looks like a fish. Now, when I say I'm going to daily drive this car, yes, that means in the winter, and yes, that means in the snow. And while the 2014 model with its all-wheel drive was appealing for that reason, this particular example was also really appealing. That's because while the AMG wagon came standard with 19-inch wheels, the person who ordered this one special ordered it with 18-inch wheels so he could put winter tires on it. And I'm going to do the same thing, and yes, that means I'm going to drive it around in the snow. This will be my winter daily driver. I'm sure there will be videos to come. As for the performance, it's incredible. It's tremendous fast, it handles great, it has all this cool technology, but I'll save all that for a more in-depth review coming later. Right now, let me give you a quick tour of this thing. I'll start up front, maybe the most important part of this car. It has a 5.5 liter twin turbo V8. Like I said, it makes 520 horsepower and 515 pound feet of torque. It was made by a guy named Kevin Bubeck. Now, all that means that it does zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds for a wagon. And if it had the AMG performance pack with even more horsepower, it could have done it in 3.9. It's rear wheel drive and it puts power to the ground using AMG's speed shift MCT transmission. I have no idea what that means, but it's it sounds like the kind of name Germans give things when they're trying to make them sound cool. Now inside you get to what I consider the most unfortunate part of the car, the interior color. It's sort of this old man beige tan for virtually everything except for the steering wheel and the dashboard which is an even worse brown. The dealer that listed this car for sale, Mercedes-Benz of Maplewood near Minneapolis, they initially had it for $49,700 and then $47,700 and then $45,700 and I bought it for forty four. dollars and I suspect the reason that no one was buying this car was because of this unfortunate interior combination. But the reality is when these cars are so rare, you don't really have that much of a choice unless you want to spend 120 grand to buy one new. Yeah, that's right, 120 grand. The original sticker price on this one was $111,000 and the new ones are way more expensive than that. That's a lot of money for a station wagon. And considering I paid 44,000 five years later, that's a lot of depreciation. I'd rather have this beige and brown interior than lose 70 grand in five years. And then there's the back, 520 horsepower, zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds and a cargo area that I could sleep in if I wanted to. It's the ultimate practical high performance car and I love it for that reason. Speaking of the back, there's also another benefit of this car, the exhaust.
It's not often that you hear that sound coming from a wagon. And now, join me on my cross-country trip in my brand new car. And eventually we made it back to Pennsylvania, but the trip wasn't just a fun cruise across the country. You see this sign? It's a joke. It's increasingly maddening to drive on the interstates in the United States because nobody follows this sign and the police never seem to want to enforce it. The left lane isn't the fast lane, it's the passing lane and you shouldn't be in it if you're not passing someone. It's not for cruising like this driver and this driver and this driver. This guy even went to the trouble of getting a confusing vanity plate with eights and B's to thwart the police and then he sits in the passing lane going the speed limit. And don't even get me started on the elephant races between professional drivers and tractor trailers. This one went on for over six minutes. Anyway, frustration aside, I eventually got back to Philadelphia and averaged a respectable 21.7 miles per gallon over 1,200 miles. Not bad for a big V8. Get ready for a more in-depth review of my new car and a Doug score soon as I'm now getting acquainted with my new AMG wagon. Meanwhile, my wife is now getting acquainted with the Land Rover Service Department.